there are big shoes to fill. We can never be the same as the past. We have a full barbershop, a full spa. We've been in business for now seven years. They said, uh, why don't you come on board with us? And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. We just opened a few months ago. You have to have more thriving cities. You have to have more entertainment for people. And that's what we're doing. You want to tell me a little bit about yourselves? Well, I started working here in 1972 with my father and mother, and I've been working here ever since. Uh, I enjoy, I'm a graduate gemologist from the Gemological Institute of America. I grew up here in Miami. Uh, I went to the University of Georgia, and uh, I can't think of anything else. He loves to play tennis oh, three I to do, four times do, a week. I do play tennis. I do play <laughs> tennis whenever I can. Uh, whenever my daughter will let me off, uh, I get to play tennis, <laughs> and that keeps me in shape. And uh, and I was also born and raised in Miami, um, moved out of the state for about 10 years, working in the jewelry industry for another fine independent retailer, focusing on the high-end watch scene for about five years. Um, and then five years ago, I moved back to Miami, and now I'm an avid uh, salsa dancer and scuba diver, also a graduate gemologist, and now I'm also an American Gem Society registered jeweler. Um, in fact, the only one in Miami-Dade County right now. Oh, wow. Hey, in fact, I forgot to tell you that when you were out last week in Austin, Texas, uh, somebody came in and, uh, and made a purchase just because we were American Gem Society. Oh, good. That's, that's a cool little, cool little <laughs> fact that happened recently. I didn't know that. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> so, how did Jace Jewelers come about? Like, well, how how was the uh, my father of that? Uh, was in the Navy in World War II, and when the war ended, he went on the GI Bill to Colorado to watchmaking school. He learned how to repair watches, and at that time, he was repairing watches full service for one dollar. Wow! Each watch, and if he was really lucky. The, the owner of the watch would buy a new leather band for 25 cents more. And so he would have a $1.25 sale. And if you repeat that step over and over thousands and thousands of times, he would eventually start to make a little bit of money to where he could invest in buying inventory. In the beginning, it was silver jewelry. Then it became gold jewelry. Then gold jewelry with colored stones and then diamonds, and then platinum, and now we have a full range from silver to platinum, from things as low as $100 to things that are $100,000. So that was the creation of it. It was your dad that that's started it. That's my dad it. that started it. And that's your grandfather, I'm yes. assuming. Yes, and my grandmother worked in department stores, and she always wanted to leave her department, which was... Purses? I think it's purses and lipstick, I think. And her bosses would not let her sell anything but purses, but when a couple of clients wanted her to sell them other items as well, she decided, I can sell jewelry. So she then joined my grandfather and they yeah, but She was actually together. selling jewelry before my father was because my father was just repairing watches. Yeah. And Did then, you guys, Well, did you guys know that you were going to come into the jewelry industry? I did, but she has a sister also, and they both went in, in uh, graduated in, in college in different uh, fields, and they worked for a few years and decided that it wasn't for them, that it would be better if they tried uh, their family business. So they both went out to California, Cal Carlsbad, California, and became graduate gemologists, and both of them worked here. Uh, Jill is still here, but my other daughter, actually married a fellow that she met at GIA uh, whose family has a jewelry store in Montana and they've been there uh, for 137 years. Jeez. So they think we're youngsters at <laughs> 73 years. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy how uh, old the history in jewelry is where some stores are so old. Yeah, some stores, are, you know, if they make it to 10 years, 20 years, they, they're, they're, they're lucky. Yeah. Is it always been in this exact location? It's been right here since about 19... We, we were on Ponce in 1940... No, 1956, and here probably since... Probably about 1962. We've been here just in this location for a long time. Mm -hmm. same, same landlord. She's been very good, by the way. <laughs> but, but I have uh, current rates nowadays. So someone, tell me a little bit about the difficulties you guys face maybe 
trying to you know keep this stable like you said after 20 years we can't just rely on walk in trade anymore uh, the 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 world is, is gotten much it was bigger or smaller because we used to just compete with people in this area or maybe Dade land or Westland which which is probably not a competition in, anymore but now we have competition with Merrick Park you mm -hmm. have South Beach you have the design district you have Mall, you have Aventura, you have the internet, you have all over the world. We compete with 47th Street in New York for the price on diamonds. Mm -hmm. uh, people search all over, and we have to give them a, a good value for their money and also give them the best service we possibly can. Of course. And one of the difficulties now is that it costs a lot more to do business and everybody expects a special price or a special discount as well. So, you know, the, the, the margins are shrinking and you can't just rely on, like he said, walk-in traffic. Um, you know, we, back in the 60s and 70s, people spent, I think, a larger proportion of their income on gifts for birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. Um, what really makes our industry and our store in particular complicated is that we do um, custom jobs, we do repairs, we do appraisals, we buy estate jewelry from the public on a daily basis. And without that full service and that all-encompassing um, expertise, we wouldn't be able to still be here because you can't just rely on the person coming in to buy a gift for something. Yeah, it's about maybe five or ten different avenues of sources of income rather than the person coming in shopping for their anniversary or birthday to celebrate uh, a special time in their lives is just one of the avenues that we have for in generating income. Like Jill said, our estate buying, you know, uh, and in our custom, I just took in a custom job while you were waiting for to make a new bracelet uh, for somebody that inherited a bracelet that didn't fit her, so then we're going to take the diamonds out of that bracelet and we're going to make her a bracelet that she picked out and that we designed together. And also today, somebody came in, two people came in with uh, jewelry that they've come, come by one way or another. Usually it's inheriting uh, that they, they have no use for anymore, and we turn that into money. And then with the money, they, one person was actually uh, going to, so they did sell me the jewelry, and it was quite a lot of jewelry. And they're going to, they had me make the check out to their daughter because their daughter is buying a house which the parents are going to move into the, with, with the children and they felt like they should give them something you know, for, to live there. So they're giving her quite a big check. And the other one was somebody that uh, had some gold, it was just scrap gold, that has been lying around for maybe 20 or 30 years in a drawer and they keep looking at it and they decided that now's the time to sell it before it, you know, it gets lost. Yeah. One of the neatest things about this industry is that we create relationships with everyone who walks in the door. There's an emotion associated with whatever that they're doing, whether it's the passing of a parent, the celebration of a new family member being born, um, a divorce. It's not all happy reasons, but it's that's why it's so important to have somebody that you can trust um, who's been here a long time and has expertise because we do the things that other jewelers either don't have the time for, don't want to do, or don't know how to do. Yeah, once we, once we gain your confidence and you become a customer, uh, we rarely lose customers. We keep them for their, for throughout their lives and, and even their children's life. For example, we're selling engagement rings to the grandchildren of the, mm. of the, of the people that my father sold their engagement rings to. So it's kind of like a physician or a doctor or you know, a lawyer that, that you trust and, and you want to go back to that same person. True. So what does the future look like for Jules? Or for Jay's? Jay's. <laughs> oh, here I am. <laughs> well, she got the J. She, she was named Jill because of the, the J's. Yeah. yeah. All three children in our family are J's. Well, Jason, is J Jennifer, the, and Jillian. <laughs> is J the last name? No, no, it was my father's uh, nickname, but oh. uh, because it sounds like the letter J, I, I named all my kids with J's. <laughs>
So what does the future look like for Jays? So the future is um, pretty positive, especially now with the renovation of Miracle Mile Streetscape yeah. finally complete. We'll have more pedestrian uh, friendly. Hopefully we'll have a lot more people moving into the downtown as well um, and have a more lively atmosphere through day and night on weekends and weekdays. Um, but we're looking to, you know, welcome another generation into our store, whether it starts with, you know, the $100 to $300 fashion jewelry that we carry from our designers like Rebecca, all the way up to the impo most important purchase in many people's lives, which is their engagement and wedding bands, um, and then continue that relationship, you know, for 30, 40 years. We, we don't look to make one sale. Of course. We look to um, begin a relationship that will continue throughout each client's life. Yeah, we're not trying to hit a home run on anybody. We're trying to make a little bit on every little sale and just keep you coming back over and over again. Well, you guys have any last words you want to tell the audience before we wrap this up? Well, uh, like Jill said about this, uh, the streetscape, we're really happy with that. And we're for the density. I, I, I think there's about 15 projects big projects that are already under construction in downtown Coral Gables. And I think there's another 15 that are trying to get permits, which will make more people living and shopping downtown. And that, that's good for the businesses. And our store, our showroom is open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. And we're located at 237 Miracle Mile in Coral Gables. But you can shop anytime at www.jaysjewelers.com and that's j-a-e-s jewelers.com all right thank you guys so much thank you bruce thank you jill do you guys have an instagram the, the audience we do here? it's um jay's jewelers <laughs> so <laughs> make it real simple <laughs> go ahead and follow them on uh instagram jay's jewelers you can follow us at gable cigars at the lounge.media Thank you guys so much for staying tuned to the end of another Social Saturdays. My name's Javier Cobus and Bruce and Bruce and Jill. And Jill Hornick. And we'll catch you guys on Monday for Coffee and Cigars number 11. Thank you. Bye. Bye.